In this video, we will demonstrate the use of IDEX products for the quantification of fecal indicator bacteria. For this method, you will need IDEX's Call Alert, Call Alert 18, or IntraAlert Media, Quantitrays, a Quantitray sealer, Comparator, thermometers and incubator, gloves, DI water, and other miscellaneous supplies such as pipettes, lab books, and a MPN or most probable number lookup table. Before proceeding with these methods, you'll need to ensure that your water quality sample was properly collected and that you've utilized proper holding and preservation requirements. If you suspect chlorine to be in the waters being monitored, make sure that your collection vessels contain sodium biosulfate. Each water quality sample that will be tested for fecal indicator bacteria will need to be placed in an ice chest on ice and cooled to one to four degrees. For each water quality monitoring event, we suggest that you place a temperature blank into the ice chest at the same time you put your very first water quality sample into that ice chest. Holding times refer to the period of time between a sample's collection and its analysis. If you wish to use your data for regulatory purposes, you have a maximum of six hours holding time plus an additional two hours in which the sample needs to be processed. If you wish to use your data for ambient purposes, then your holding time can be up to 24 hours. Before starting, sanitize your work area. Remove your sample from the ice chest and allow the sample to warm up to room temperature. Turn on the Quantitray sealer as it takes a little time for it to warm up. It will be ready to use when both the red and green lights are lit. Incubators should be on and checked to ensure that they are warmed to the correct temperature for the test being run. Check your incubator's thermometer annually against a NIST certified traceable thermometer. Label all of your preparations so that each field or QA sample has a corresponding mixing bottle and Quantitray. We suggest that your Quantitrays contain the following information. Lab name, sampling date, sample location, or quality assurance, quality control note, dilution rate, if any were used, field sampler's name, and be sure to put some places for you to write down the positive well counts. Quality control should be checked with each batch of samples being tested. 10% or one per batch if it's less than 10. Blank samples can be prepared with sterile DI water. Prepare your negative blank by using sterile DI water and placing it into a sterile sampling container following similar techniques that you would use in the field. Take your room temperature sample or QA blank and pour 100 mils into your sterile mixing vessel. If you'll be preparing a dilution, use sterile DI water 
and then place your measured fraction of the sample into your mixing vessel containing the DI water. Quality control should be conducted on each lot of reagent. Using an appropriate inoculate of Quanticult or an American type culture collection. You may also choose to accept the IDEX certificate of quality. Select your media and separate one blister package from the strip, taking care not to accidentally open the adjacent pack. Ensure that the powder is at the bottom of the blister pack. Hold the blister pack facing down. Snap back the scoring line, forming a V with the opening facing your open mixing vessel. Allow the powder to fall into the vessel. Cap your mixing vessel and mix the sample well to dissolve the reagent. Allow the sample to rest so that any foam present can dissipate. Anti-foaming agents are also available from IDEX. Use your sterile labeled Quantitray. Do not open it by pulling on the foil tab. You should grab the edges at the top of the Quantitray and squeeze. Pour the sample into the Quantitray. Place your filled Quantitray into the matching rubber sealer insert. Gently feed the insert and Quantitray into the sealer. The sealed Quantitray will be dispensed from the back of the sealer. If the insert goes in crooked, just press on the black button above the insert port and it will reverse the feed, backing the insert out so that you can correct it. Place the sealed Quantitray into the incubator. When using Call Alert 18, incubate at 35 degrees C for 18 hours to measure total coliforms. To measure fecal coliforms, incubate at 44.5 degrees C for 18. When using call alert, incubate at 35 degrees for 24 hours. When using intra alert, incubate samples for 24 hours at 41 degrees C. You do not want somebody inadvertently opening the door to your incubator while the samples are being incubated. We suggest that a warning label be placed on the incubator's door. You can include information such as when the sample was put into the incubator and when it is to be removed and read. Remove the Quantitray after it has been incubated for the time period specified. Now we will go over reading Quantitrays. For call alert 18, if the appearance is less yellow than the comparator when incubated at 35 degrees C or 44 and a half degrees C, the result will be negative for total coliforms 
E. coli, and also negative for fecal coliforms. If the yellow appears equal to or greater than the comparator when incubated at 35 degrees C, the result will be positive for total coliforms. If a well is yellow greater to or greater than that comparator when incubated at 44 and a half degrees C, the result is positive for fecal coliforms. If the appearance is yellow and fluoresces equal to or greater than the comparator when incubated at 35 degrees C, the result is positive for E. coli. For call alert, if the appearance is less yellow than the comparator, the result will be negative for total coliforms and E. coli. If the appearance is yellow equal to or greater than the comparator, the result is positive for total coliforms. If the appearance is yellow and fluorescence is equal to or greater than the comparator, the result is positive for E. coli. When using InterAlert, the lack of fluorescence indicates a negative result for enterococci. Blue fluorescence indicates a positive result for enterococci. Here's an example of how to read a Quantitray 2000. Count and mark the positive large wells with a Sharpie. In this case, we have 11 positive large wells. Do the same with the small wells. In this instance, we have three positive small wells. By using the MPN table to find the most probable number of colonies, we look at the column number of large wells positive and find the number 11. And then we look at the number of small wells positive and find the number 3. Where the row and column intersect, that is our MPN per 100 milliliters, or the most probable number of colonies per 100 mils. Now let's follow some monitors in the lab. First, remove the comparator from its storage sleeve. Lay out your quanta trays next to the comparator. Prepare a lab data sheet to record your test results on. Begin examining each of the quanta trays wells. Count the positive large and small wells. Then, for each quanta tray, look up the most probable number on your test's MPN table and record the result on your data sheet. Before analyzing your E. coli or enterococcus results, put on a pair of UV protective glasses. Insert the quanta tray into a viewing box illuminated by a UV lamp and count the number of positive large and positive small wells. If it fluoresces when using call alert, that well is positive for E. coli. If you're using InterAlert, the fluorescing well is positive for enterococci. Lab activities don't stop with the analysis of quantitrays. You still have to deal with waste management. It is the laboratory's responsibility to comply with all regulations governing waste management. And any material that is suspected to have viable bacteria attached to it must be sterilized prior to disposal. We suggest that you work with your technical advisory committee to implement a sound quality control program for your monitoring. 
and implement your quality assurance project plan accordingly.